having seen the definition of who is a customer, who is a banker, now let us look into the relationship between a banker and a customer. In the various transactions a banker does on behalf of a customer and with a customer, the role of the banker and the role of the customer changes. Primarily or generally, what is the relationship between a banker and a customer? The relationship between a banker and customer is that of creditor and debtor. Now, who is the creditor? Who is the debtor? Now, when a customer deposits the money with the bank, the bank is the debtor and the customer is the creditor. Let us be very clear about it because sometimes uh, people confuse, get confused. When a customer deposits the money with the bank, the banker receives the money and the banker is liable to pay. And the person who lent the money is the creditor, the person who borrowed the money is the debtor. That all of us know. Therefore, bank has borrowed the money and the customer has lent the money. Whenever their deposit happens, the customer lends money and the bank borrows money. Therefore, whenever there is a deposit of money by a customer in a bank, the banker is a debtor and the customer is the creditor. On the other hand, if a person takes, let us say a person takes a housing loan from a bank, in this case who is the borrower? The customer is the borrower. And who is the person who gives the loan? The bank gives the loan. Therefore, bank is the creditor and the customer is the borrower. The roles are reversed here. This is the primary or general relationship between a banker and customer. Is that of a debtor or creditor depending upon whether the bank has taken a deposit or has given a loan. Then there are other some special relationships. For example, if a bank takes the safe custody, some articles under safe custody, then the bank becomes trustee and the customer becomes beneficiary. The bank must keep the article safe and hand it over to the customer. The way I am telling all this relationship is that sometimes questions come in the exam. They say a person, a customer deposited uh, some valuable with a bank under safe custody and in this case the role of the banker is a trustee and the, bank and the customer is beneficiary. On the other hand, a person goes and hires a safe deposit locker. What is the difference between safe custody and safe deposit? In safe custody, banker receives the valuable and a sealed cover and gives a receipt. The banker has to take responsibility for the goods that are given to him. On the other hand, in the case of a locker, what the banker does? The banker is not accepting anything for safe custody. What he is doing is, he is hiring the locker space to the customer. 8 inches by 8 inches by 24 inches locker space is hired, is given on rent by the bank to the customer. Therefore, in the case of safe deposit locker, the banker is the lessor because the bank leases the safe deposit locker to the customer and the customer is the lessee because he has taken that space on lease. What is, the, what is the intricate meaning of this? In the case of safe deposit locker, bank is not responsible for the content. Bank only hires the lock, locker. You keep whatever you want. You take whatever you want. We are not party to it. We are not responsible for it. On the other hand, in safe custody, the banker physically receives the valuables in his possession and he is responsible for the contents and for safe delivery back of that packet to the customer whenever he wants. That is the difference. In the case of safe deposit locker, the bank is not responsible for the contents of what is kept inside the locker because the bank only hires the space. Then in the case of a jewel loan, 
In the case of a jewel loan, what happens? Uh, the jewels are handed over to the uh, to the bank by the customer, and the bank becomes pledge and the customer is pledgeor. Pledge is nothing but bailment of good for repayment of a loan. So, what is bailment? Bailment of bailment means uh, delivering goods for some purpose. For example, in those good old days, people used to go to um, Varnashi and they may not return. So, what they will do? They will go and hand over the goods to some village mukya and uh, then go. So, that is called bailment. You hand over the goods for safekeeping so that after you are return, you can come back and take. Even in villages, many times it happens. Some people go for long, long leave or something like that. They take important things and hand it over to the village mukya and then they go. And while returning, they will collect it. That is called bailment. Pledge is a bailment of goods for a loan. In the case of uh, a jewel loan, the borrower delivers the jewels to the bank and the bank is the pledge and the customer is the pledgeor. In the case of collection, next let us take a customer deposits a check for collection and the check is drawn on some outstation place and the bank has to, you cannot go there and collect it therefore you put the check for collection to the bank. In this case the bank is the agent, acts as an agent on behalf of the principal who is the customer. So here the relationship between the banker and the customer is that of agent and principal. And while doing standing instruction, for example, a customer says, every month you debit my account 10,000 rupees and remit it to Life Insurance Corporation of India for a premium under my policy number so and so, so and so. The bank is doing it every time, every month. So a bank is acting as an agent in this case and the customer is the principal. Let us take another instance. A bank takes a, gives a housing loan. In the case of housing loan, what the bank takes as security? It is the mortgage of the house. What is the difference between mortgage and pledge? Mortgage is the charge created over immovable properties. Pledge is a charge created over movable properties. What is movable and what is immovable, you know the difference. Land, building, it is all immovable property. Anything that is attached to the land is called an immovable property. On the other hand, table, chair, anything that you can physically move, they are movable property. You can pledge movable properties, you can mortgage immovable property. Therefore, when a person takes a housing loan, the person mortgages his house to the bank. And therefore, the bank becomes mortgagee and the person becomes mortgager. Then wealth management services. There are sometimes the bank is doing so, so many agency services. It advises the clients how to invest their money in profitable uh, portfolios. In such cases, the bank is the advisor and the customer is the advisee. These are the various legal relationships that are possible other than the primary relationship which is that of debtor and creditor. Questions can be asked from this. They may ask when a check is deposited for collection in the account of a customer by a customer in a bank, the bank, the role of a bank is that of an agent. Like that, if you master this, uh, this uh, the contents of this slide, you will be able to answer any questions that is asked under uh, the various, um, various relationships, legal relationships between the customer and the banker.